Hello everybody and welcome back uh, to the Library of Ruin. Alrighty, so <coughs> in this one, we are going to be taking it relatively easy because as I said in my uh, previous upload, uh, I am currently sick, so my voice isn't quite feeling it. Um, however, I want to record, and I want to do some Runa. So, we are probably just going to do some general receptions today, or a invitation that doesn't have too much in the way of voicing, because I don't think I could really do any girl voice right now, but that's fine. So, I do want to go over a couple tiny build changes that I made. I didn't make... Okay, I made a few. But they're not too substantial, but I do think they are going to be for the best. The first one is going to be Kyle. We got rid of toughness on him and instead replaced it with a bottom deal. So whenever he discards, he draws an additional card. Um, Chun, 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 I always say Chun. We gave Furious Fire Rending the Skies, which basically makes it so we apply double burn. And then we have the Stigma Workshop Weaponry, which makes us apply one extra burn whenever we apply burn. Now, the discard synergy is because not only do we have Rekindled Burning Flash, which draws all Burning Flashes from our deck, but we have Burning Flash, which discards the other Burning Flash and then draws a card. So this is a uh, two-cost... Six, uh, two cost, six to ten, deal two burn, well, actually deal four burn, draw two. So, overall, I think that was a pretty good change. I think it was for the best. Now, one of the biggest quote quote reworks we did was with not AM. And basically, what we did is I got rid of the charge synergy with his deck completely. He no longer has any charge synergy, but I actually think what he has is better. Now we have Taste Test, which is going to play into his kind of more support role a lot better. Uh, Crux Simplex, because a zero cost draw one card is always good, and as we can see, he basically just wants to restore light as much as possible with uh, Jahan's deck. And here's what we did with his passives. Uh, he still has U-Corp Experimental Suit, which is so long as he's not uh, not staggered, he takes 10% less damage and stagger damage. We gave him Toughness, so at Emotion Level 5, he gets 3 Protection and 3 Stagger Protection, which is very, very good. And then we gave him Grit, so he always takes one less stagger from everything. Now... The reason I think this is actually going to be for the best is because this floor actually kind of revolves around Jehan. Um, Jehan just really enables everything that we want to do. So my thinking is, we just want to make Jehan as tanky as possible. So while we did remove the charge synergy, I actually think what we did here is better. Toughness is going to be ever present very useful. Grit is going to make it so he's not staggered as often. Very useful. 10% reduced um, damage and stagger damage. Very good. Nuovo Fabric, 1 to 2. Uh, reduced damage and stagger damage. And then the actual Puppeteer, which makes it so at the start of the scene, gain 1 to 2 protection or 1 to 2 stagger protection for each ally with puppet strings. And then if everybody has puppet strings, haste, light, and it's all pretty good. So he is going to be extremely defensive. But I think that's basically what we want. So I think it's a good change overall. Um, not a big change, but a decent one. We gave Hod just a teeny tiny bit of a passive change. Um, we gave her fervor and calmness rather than the um, five cost permanent one strength. This makes her a little bit weaker in the early stages of a fight, but it makes her that much more deadly 
in the later stages of the fight. So by the time, if she survives, by the time she gets to that point where she can activate Ego, she's going to be completely unstoppable. Because by then, locked, she'll have Blade unlocked, she'll have Fervor, Calmness will be taking effect, and then, of course, we gain extra power because of uh, Pei Chuang's deck. So I think this is a small but relatively good change for uh, Hod. Next, we literally changed one pass of Washita. Rather than giving two protection to the ally with the lowest health, now recover five HP slash stagger resist for an ally with the lower HP slash stagger resist at the end of the scene. I think just a little bit more sustain is going to be really, really good, and it does not hurt Sheeta's dodge chance in the slightest. Because we had already had something with a similar effect, I just think the actual recovery is going to be better. Um, I don't believe we changed Sarah's deck at all. Now, we did actually change Crimson's, and we gave her a relatively new mod, um, it does have a fight, although I started with all the pages and stuff. I'm not sure why. Um, so we will be doing the fight at some point. But Crimson is using Amplified Pierre, which um, is pretty good. It has a lot of bleed synergy, which, I mean, as we know, we already really like bleed synergy. Now, something really good it has is Additives. Start of Clash, target does not lose bleed stacks, nor take damage from bleed. On hit, recover HP equal to stacks of bleed on the target. I actually think that is going to be really powerful in tandem with Red Shoes, the ego page that deals damage based on bleed on the target. If we're not using up the bleed, we're just powering up Red Shoes. Uh, Filet, of course, going to be a very good one. Gotcha, Terror is just always super good and then Flesh Carve for more bleed. As for the passives, we are also using Amplified Jack. On a successful hit, inflict 10 bleed this scene, once per scene. And Anard, which was her previous um, book, page, set, outfit thing, uh, we have Finish Off and Mutilating Saw. I would have put on Bloodthirsty Killing. Unfortunately, you can't do that, so I decided to just go with the other ones so she can apply anywhere from an extra two to an extra three stacks of bleed which is just insane and then we did not change Caius. now i did a little bit of an experimental thing with facey randy um i do want to do this on hod's floor i actually just don't know who we would swap out for it though because i'm really happy <sighs> I mean, technically, if Hod was on another floor, or if Caius was on another floor, which I know that we have been swapping people out here and there, um, if either of them were on a different floor, we could just move Facey Randy onto that floor, and then he would be able to get just insane Pikmin value. But here's what we got. A little bit of Unity Synergy, and a ton of self-bleed Synergy. We have Jakan. Dice gain plus one power for every five stacks of bleed on self. And then we have Bottom Deal because we're going to be discarding with the Unity Pages. Encourage because you can never go wrong with a bit of healing. And Puffy Broom because smoke is present on this floor. So the biggest one, Subliminate. Dice gain plus one power for every five stacks of bleed on self. Bloody Passion. Take no damage from bleed. That, right there, is going to be nuts. That is going to be insane. And as far as I know, the double bleed from Hod's floor actually does apply with self-bleeding effects. So you can see why that would be so freaking powerful on Hod. But for the moment, it's just a theory craft. I would definitely want to put uh, bleed bleed effects, do one more stack or two more stacks, you know, all that sort of stuff. Because if we're applying it to ourselves and we're not getting hurt by it, then I want as much as we can get. 
I was trying to make Roberto into a, a goth waifu who wears some nice, fashionable glasses. However, um, I didn't have an outfit that really worked for that. I am still going to figure it out. Don't, never you mind that. I'm going to figure it out. But for the moment, I actually thought the Sister and Quietudes page actually looked pretty solid. Obviously, other than the fact that we can't put glasses on it. It's almost there. Just needs a little bit more work, and then I think we'll have something on our hands. Alternatively, I was debating using Hanafuda, um, because I think that would fall under the goth GF category. But we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll, we'll discover what we need to do. Now, a mod that we saw in a previous episode, the reception against the head, was removed from the workshop. Who knows why? I'm not going to pry. But because it was removed, uh, two of our builds on Bina's floor actually needed to change. So Bina is back to regular Bina. Um, she no longer has her special page where she's healing for like 10% max health uh, every turn. However, she does have a lot more fairy synergy. Arbiter's Fragment is from Angels of Runa. Very, very powerful mass attack page. Er, yeah, mass individual page, I think. And then Skills of a Fairy, which is from... Well, I forget the name of the mod, but it's it's the one that adds all of these. And then we have Fairy Fal Falchion. Inflict one fairy on hit. Most of her abilities already do. Elven Etchucha. I'm sick. You, you gotta cut me a break. When hit, inflict one fairy to the attacker. Dokalfar Dirge. When a character dies, inflict four fairy to all enemies. Very, po very powerful. Fickle Fairy. At the start of the scene, inflict one fairy to a random enemy. And then Electric Shock, just for a tiny bit of extra utility. And Azazel was uh, Xena. And that's, by the way... That's where deterrence on the page would come from. Like, for example, it's a 7 to 11 deterrence. It came from that mod, but because we no longer have it, we no longer see the word deterrence, which is kind of sad. I, I was growing used to that. But because this Azel can no longer be Zena, we went ahead and gave him Kenji's page, which is a pure slash deck. Something him and Vera can now, you know, relate over. And he is using Zion's passive, the third blade, which is going to give us a lot more power. And then Twin Hauler, just for a bit more sustain. And then the final thing we changed, I changed some of Aeon's passives. He now has the Gotcha Sword on hit, inflict 1 to 2 Burn, Bleed, Erosion, Fairy, or Paralysis. Only one of them, but he inflicts 1 to 2 of them. In a clash, the character's dice gain 2 to 3 power, and the opponent's dice gain 1 to 2 power. And then fervor, so that raise stakes is always going to win for us. Overall, I thought it was just a bunch of quality of life little changes. We are going to do this in the next episode, when I actually have my voice completely back. Um, but at the moment, Tiferous voice would literally kill me. So we're just going to put a hold on this for now. But this is what we're going to be doing in the next episode. As for what we're doing in this episode. Well, you technically already saw her. The Sister in Quietude. Has a unique combat page that cannot be replaced or swapped. Uh, draw two additional pages at the start of the act. After dealing 30 damage through attacks, all dice on the next combat page gain plus two power. 250 health, 140 stag resist, 2 to 7 speed. The boys workshop. Restore 3 light, draw 1 page. This die deals twice the twice as much stagger damage on hit with the counter die. Recover 5 stagger resist. Ranga workshop. The cost of this page cannot be changed. All offensive dice on this page gain on hit. Dice on this page deal plus 2 damage. And the final hit gives you 2 haste if it hits. Zelkova Workshop. The cost of this page cannot be changed. 
on use, draw one page, on hit, inflict three bleed, on hit, deal five, stagger. Ulterior logic. If any dice on this page lose in a clash, destroy the last dice on this page. Um, four to eight on clash win, boost max roll of the last die by two. Five to eight on clash win, boost it by another two. And then on hit, inflict two fragile next scene. Mook workshop. Uh, on use, restore three light, draw one page. On clash win, reduce power of the opponent's next die by two. And on hit, inflict two fragile. Crystal Ulterior. On use, gain one strength and damage up next scene. At emotion level three or higher, gain one additional damage up. And it's a decent little. It, uh, eh, block slash, block slash. Jeremiah. On hit, gain one strength. On hit, inflict two brittle, which is fragile. And on hit, inflict two fragile again. Actually, I'd imagine. Riddle is uh, like stagger fragile. Alias Workshop. When this page is in hand, its cost is decreased for each class clash lost until used. Combat start. Boost all dice's power by one for the scene. 5 to 12. Reduce power of target's current die by one twice. And finally, Wheels Industry. While this page is in hand, its cost is decreased for each clash one until used up to five times combat start reduce damage and stagger damage taken from attacks by 50 percent for the scene on clash win destroy all of the opponent's dice with a five to eight counter die let's make a battle worth a memory shall we they wandered into the abyss all right let's see how azazel can do unlocking the finest of stuff for our boy You know what? We win that easy. And then I'm gonna go for Snake. You know what? Easiest victory of my life. We'll take a tiny bit of damage, but that's fine. Why did we heal the full? That's not. That's not supposed to be the case. <laughs> well, we'll just say we're dead if we, uh. Uh, yeah, okay, I actually don't know why we healed back. To oh, it's because it's a 1v1. It boosted our health. But because our health is so high, it immediately healed us to full. <laughs> wow, okay. Small flutters because we do have some evade die. Let's see. Do we try to use this? I don't even know how to use this. We'll go for Shadow Sword. And then we'll go for Snake Slit. That should be an easy dub. Counts as a one-sided. Ooh, she actually won that clash. Counter die, almost going crazy. Um, could do Weight of Sin. And Eternally lit, lit Lamp. Actually, you know what? I could help out. I know that sounds like a little bit of a weird choice, but... Like, for example, we could do something like counter that and she has to counter us um you know what though i actually i'm gonna use world of spirits let's see and there's a stance uh i don't know what this means so we're just gonna try it wait what oh it's when we stop it okay hang on hang on i've got this i've got this we'll stop it right on the gold uh, I don't think we stopped it on the gold. Ouch. Man. <coughs> huh. That is such a cool move. Yoink. Wait, no, she's held in there for now. Um, now... Attacks, steal bonus damage. Uh, you know what? Where's um, where's judgment? Here it is. And then we'll go for Justicia. Here we go. I'm gonna clash with this, and then we could go for one of these, and that should work out just fine for us. 
Uh, got her. Um, I do not know. I mean, I, I gave a theory for why we healed to full, but I feel like we really shouldn't have healed to full there. They, like, she had a pretty fair shot of actually killing us, and then we got over 400. Actually, you know what? That's what it feels like to... <laughs> she got to experience what it feels like when you go into a fight, the enemy's got like 100 health, you kill them, and suddenly their health jumps up to 600. That's what just happened to her, but we got to be the ones doing it. While it is a nice change of pace, I don't think we should have killed her that easily. I think that was a closer fight until Azazel cheated. The Idol of Darkness. I actually don't know if Marcos can beat this. However, it's only fair that the true hero goes against the true villain. Ahem. I'd love darkness. Endured to all stress. 145 health. Meow meow. At the start of the act, give one strength to two random allies. Improv drumming. Oinky oink. Uh, inflict feeble and uh, fragile, obviously, for improv drumming. Fervor, a fighter that never retreats. Um, boss's orders give one protection to two random allies. This is actually. There's so many passives. Heavy hearted forte. Fort. Deal one to two stagger upon winning in a clash. On hit with a melee page. Activate one of the following effects. Each. Each effect activates once per scene. Inflict one feeble, inflict one paralysis, deal two stagger, recover two stagger. Okay. Starstruck. On use, recover one light. Four to six, with a one to three recycle. Er, I'm sorry. Er. With a one to three dodge that cannot be recycled. Weird. Wish and dream. On use, restore one light and draw one page. On hit, recover user's HP by the natural roll. Um, with a 3 to 5 block, on clash win, inflict one paralysis next scene. Fight for fame. On use, gain one haste next scene. On hit, recover two HP twice. Improvise song. On use, draw one page. 2 to 5 block, 1 to 7 pierce, 2 to 5 block, and 1 to 7 pierce once again. Twinkling Cannon. On use, gain two protection next scene. On hit, inflict one by next scene. 6 to 15. Applauding Encore. All dice on this page lose two power. Um, recover three HP of two random allies. Recover three personal st stagger resist. And recover three H personal HP. Oh, sorry. Idols Love. Give one strength to two random allies. On Clash Win, reduce power of the opponent's next die by two. 7 to 21, jeez. Okay. Well, let's see how our dear Marcos Jr. does. Against the idol of darkness. You think you can stop me? Well, you're more of a villain than I thought. 8 to 14, 7... Oh, it only makes sense. Arcana Wave. Versus the idol's love. Alright, we did lose it. But we can recover so many uh, stats that it won't even matter. Improvised song. We could go for Arcana Flash. Oh, never mind. No, we can't. Um, I'm going to go for Lifesaver. And then we're going to go for Multi Slash. Ow. Okay, we're fine. Our protection is keeping us very safe because Marcos actually gets all of the protection all to himself. I guess herself? Since it's technically the magical girl. Whatever. <laughs> Marcos has always been the magical boy. Um, 6 to 15 twice gain 2. So Idol of Darkness is going to gain 4 protection next scene. Let's go for Sink into Misery to counter that one. And even though we know we're not going to win, let's go for receiving requests so that we can draw. Okay. 
A lot of our stats were just recovered. We're sitting almost at full. Let's go for big eyes so that the idol is enchanted to us. Big Bird, with its many eyes, decided to watch over the forest for intruders, for Big Bird's eyes can see very far and see things that others could not. Okay. Wish and Dream. We're going to go for Pierce Through because that is an easy, easy victory. Then we're going to go for In the Name of Justice. Ow. That's fine. Oh, Pierce Through actually didn't work out for us. <coughs> That is really unfortunate. Not the end of the world, but very unfortunate. Can't go for Arcana Flash, so we're going to try... Actually, you know what? Hang on. Let's go for Arcana Wave. And then... Let's actually just hold. Ouch. Okay. Okay. Starstruck. We can beat that one. Mm. Improvised song. I'm going to counter that, and then we're going to go for Lifesaver right here. This should be fine. Ow. Mm. Could go for Judgment. After taking damage the first die, ooh, Punishment could be really, really good in this situation, though. Alternatively, the extra sin would give us some strength as well. I'm actually going to go for punishment because we can guarantee that we're going to be the ones taking damage. Um, and then beak. Hmm. Justitia is kind of the, the easy way out this time. Let's go for apocalypse. I know that seems weird, but let's see how it goes. So, 6 to 8, 5 to 8, 4 to 8, 2 to 8, 6 to 10. Um, could go for Apocalypse now. I'm actually going to opt not to do that. Let's go for Arcana Flash right there. And then Receiving Request right here. We are going to take a little bit of damage. That's okay. Arcana Flash does end up staggering the idol. And now, it's up to us to finish off this evil once and for all. Thus considering us... A true magical girl. Be gone! Your evil will not be tolerated. Nice. <laughs> the, the best magical boy we've ever seen versus the idol of darkness who sought to corrupt our magical ways. Mm -mm -mm. Not in my library. Now it's time for something a little special. We're going against the Zwei Section 2 once again. But this time, the Shock Troops. Zwei Support. Uh, Zwei Support is very good. We love ourselves some Zwei Support. Uh, fortify. Restore one light. One-sided. Change types. So basically, if it's one-sided, it deals slash. Clumsy Swing. Gain one endurance. Next scene. Deal two stagger. Unused, restore two light. Safeguard, restore two light. And on Clash Win, uh, deal extra stagger damage. Your shield. Gain, give one protection to two random allies. On use, draw one uh, page. On Clash Win, deal three damage, four to seven. And then inflict one enervation, which is deal X times two less damage this scene. So we would be dealing less damage. And then reprisal. Gain two protection, increases outgoing damage by the amount of endurance on self. On clash win, boost the value of the next, of uh, boost the max value. <sighs> it can roll for plus three. Basically, four to four to ten evade, <laughs> five to seven. I um, inflict innervation. I'm sorry. I'm sick. I'm. <laughs> I'm having a little bit more trouble reading than normal. Zwei Rapid Response Fixer. Um, your Shield, Second Wind, Rapid Response. Overall, pretty solid stuff. Fortify, Rapid Response, Restore to Light, Gain One Haste. Next scene, on Clash Wind, gain an additional haste. Your Shield once again, Reprisal once again, 
And now Blitzkrieg. Gain one Assault the scene, which boosts the minimum rolls of uh, offensive dice by the amount for the scene. On hit, add a Pierce die that rolls 5 to 8. And on hit, gain one Assault next scene. And then the Assault Fixer. U Corp Experimental Suit. Uh, that is what not Aeon has. Your Shield, Second Wind, and Calmness. Fortify. Rally. Restore two light, gain one bulwark next scene. One sided, it changes to pierce. And on clash win slash hit, a random ally recovers stagger resist and gains tenacity. Tenacity, you take X less damage and stagger damage this scene. Thorny bulwark. One sided, it all changes to pierce and it deals 20% more damage. And on hit or clash win, deal three damage three times. Your shield once again, and reprisal once again. I do think we are going to take out um, Yesod's Floor. I don't think we've taken it out in a decent amount of time. Not to mention, I did just do the big rework of uh, the Jehan deck, so it should be fine. I was kind of hoping they wouldn't go for Ingvar too much, but that's all right. If we use Clash of Blades now, that'll actually bring us back um, back to full light. And we draw a page. So, you know what? Yeah, may as well, right? Now, I'm going to go for Puppeteer's Handiwork on Ingvar and on Yesod. Then I'm going to go for Shockwave to try and counter this. And... Eey. Book of Light to try and counter that. Then, on Yesod, because he is being targeted so heavily, I'm actually just going to let him get hit. And then I'm also going to go for Maneuvered Assault because it rest restores one light, and because he has puppet strings, it also draws him one page. Then, what I'm going to do, let's go for Shockwave here, and eh, we can try for a multi slash there, although I don't see that going particularly well. And then, what is this going to do? That is going to become one-sided. Let's go ahead and clash with that. And then deal some extra stagger damage there. Ah. Mal may not be able to do any damage, but I think Mal's main utility is being able to stagger basically anyone Mal decides to single out. Okay, we... Don't end up taking any damage on not Aeon. Very good. The build is working as intended already. Very good. Even though we are taking a bit of stagger damage, it is going to be reduced thanks to our stagger protection and grit, which is reducing it even further. Okay. They're getting some attacks off, but that's okay. Unfortunately, Ingvar was just a little bit too slow. Otherwise, that block could have been decently useful um curtain call how many are you being attacked by only one okay then in that case let's go for sturdy defense that'll draw us and we'll go back up to three light once again and if you're wondering why i keep saying we'll go up to three light that's actually because one of our passives um da -da 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 -da. if the original page cost total is six or more we restore two light at the end of the scene obviously we're not able to do that just yet but that will be a very powerful thing that we can do combined with over breathing exhaustion restore two light upon using a page whose cost is four or higher which is why we were able to go back to three because of the natural one so i think we will only be at like one light but it won't be too big of a deal let's go ahead Let's do Enhancing Strings on Yesod. Let's do Mending Strings in... on Ingvar. Now we can go for a Taste Test right here. And then we could go for a Wing Voracious for Knowledge. Combined with a Needlework. And that should work out pretty good for us. We can also go for Puppetry. And then I'm just going to go for a Wild Hit right here. Um, who's going for us? 
form as a current, we should be able to win that clash relatively easily. And then we could go for Cognition Restraint. Shouldn't be that bad. Obviously, we can't go for Pitchback Pulverizer, even though I would love to. Try and win against some counter. And then we can go for Maneuver to Soul. Actually, not yet. And then we don't have any charge, so let's just gain some more charge. Let's see how this goes. Okay, Mao does end up missing both clashes, unfortunately. If we had Survivor stacked up a little bit more, it could have been nicer for us. Unfortunately, we do not. End of the line. Kind of. Thorny, thorny, bul the thorny Bulwark is going to stand no chance against Yesod and his Bonk build. <coughs> Multi Slash <coughs> is going to do a moderate amount of progress. We are able to throw a little bit of censored on there. Needlework does not work out for us in the slightest. Quick suppression, nope. Also does not work out for us. We recover a little bit of health. We take a tiny bit of damage. Nothing too terribly bad. Um, we, I guess technically could go for request. I actually very rarely do. However, I'm actually going to go for Pattern Recognition on Ingvar. That way we're able to restore even more light, which is going to be very, very good for us. Uh, can't go for Twisted Circus Blades just yet, so what we're going to do... Um, we need to win in a clash against someone, so you know what? We'll win in that clash right there. And then I do also want to apply some more Puppeteer's Handiwork. One right there, one right there, and one right here. Um, I'm actually going to go for Mending Strings on Mal because Mal has taken a little bit of damage. And then I think we can go for Straining Strings, and that should be pretty good as well. Eh, we'll go for Multi Slash. Why not? And then I'm going to just bump out as many counter died as I can. Unfortunately, we don't have too many. Little bit unfortunate, not the end of the world. We're gonna go for a clash here, and then we should be able to get value off of Stargaze. Mao is going to go for a Prayer of the Soul, which should guarantee a stagger. If not, I'm gonna be very, very sad, but we'll see what happens. Straining Strings. And it matches the censored aesthetic. Okay. Eh. Ah, okay. Not enough to stagger, but that's okay. We get some heavy, heavy bonks off. Counter die is going to work in our favor. We are above 11 before using stargaze, so... Okay, well, we got... <laughs> we got stagger, but that's fine. We're gonna take a tiny bit of damage, but even if Guts procs, that's actually going to be in our favor... Okay, Reprisal does dish out a pretty good amount of damage. Multi-Slash is going to help us get back our resources. And I'm actually going to go for Request, which I normally don't do. But you know what? Let's get experimental this time. Let's make Ingvar do just a ton of damage, because why not? And then I'm also going to use a Taste Test right here. Uh, I actually used that a little bit too early, but that's okay. So instead, let's go for Eternal Strings. Boom. Ingvar now has a ton of blunt power. The only issue is we might be losing a character or two if we're unlucky. But I'm definitely not worried about losing Aeon. That is the one thing I'm not worried about. All right, here we go. Ooh, very good attack. Multi-slash, we get a bonk. Very nice. Curtain Call is going to dish out a ton of damage. Clash of Blades, we get a bit of extra damage on there. Your shield, hopefully a reduced damage taken is going to be enough. Crux Sample, and dealt no damage, that's fine. Just trying to endure their attacks for the moment. Literally no damage, that's what I like to see. Now, we should be able to get at least a couple kills with Ingvar. I'm thinking, eh, maybe like one kill will 
half and off of this, so maybe not as much as I wanted. But the important part is that a kill can still happen, regardless. Here we go. The Circus Blades. Well, I didn't end up getting a kill, but that's fine. We should be able to sweep up basically everyone at this point. Double Bonk from Yasad is able to get a kill. Oh, Bulky Impact wasn't quite able to do it. However, Pup Tree is able to get us a stagger. Big damage, only like one more hit. Jeez, I'm taking no damage thanks to all that bulwark. Okay, recovering our resources, needle work. We're getting a couple more pages just in case, and there is only one guy left. Now, at this point, I'm actually thinking Eternal Rest and just really making Ingvar do stupid amounts of damage. Plus, with Solid Lament, we should basically be good to go at this point. Um, I actually want Ingvar to be slightly higher on the emotion chart, so we're just going to try and get a kill with him. Oh yeah, that's solid. All right, uh, two more response fixers. <laughs> An assault fixer, Alexander. Zway for all, when this character, uh, I see. When this character gains Assault, Bulwark, Tenacity, or Courage in a scene, once per scene for all statuses, a random ally gains the same status next scene. On a successful hit, deal one bonus dagger damage and inflict one fracture. I'm not sure what that one is. Your shield, Ram Procedure. For every 30% max HP loss this act, inflict one Assault. Oh, interesting. So it's like the Rhino uh, procedure, except you actually get one assault. That actually seems insane. If the character has 11 or more charge at the start of the scene, gain one Bulwark. Dude, is Icebox actually going to get a new deck after all this time? Second Wind and Calmness. Skewer. Targets an additional random enemy dice on this page wait targets an additional random enemy dice on this page lose two power except against the manually selected target when discarded restore one light and draw one page on use gain four charge when not in a clash this die changes to pierce and on clash win or hit inflict three bleed Cleaving Slash targets an additional random enemy. Wow, this is a uh, this is big AOE value is what this is. Uh, discard a random page from hand, gain six charge. When not clashing against another die, this die changes to Slash. Five to ten Slash, and then three to five gain one Assault. Next scene. Cleaving Smash. Targets an additional random enemy. Dice on this page lose two power again unless it's against the manual one. Five to eight blunt. Six to twelve. Uh, block. Excuse me. But not clashing against another die. This die changes to blunt. And on win or hit, draw one page. On hit, gain one bulwark. And counter three to six, gain two charge. And then. All out suppression. Combat start, gain two assault and three tenacity this scene. If the target of this page becomes staggered, all allies gain one courage next scene. On use, draw two pages. Whew, my god, that's a juicy page. That is delicious. Assault, of course, boosts the minimum rolls of offensive die. Um. Tenacity makes you take less damage. Stagger damage. Courage. Boost the minimum and maximum of all rolls on all dice by X for the scene. Jeez, that is a really good one. Unstoppable advance. Only usable at 20 plus charge. Draw two pages upon discarding this page. On use. Discard all pages from hand. Spend 20 charge. Gain three assault this scene. 
uh, 7 to 12 on Clash win, destroy all dice the opponent has. On Clash lose, destroy all dice on this page. On hit, seal a speed die of target for the next scene and inflict two paralysis next scene. Oh, I see. So he has two unstoppable advances. Okay, fair enough. And Magnolius. Or Magnolus. Replicating Ages. Receive charge on self. Percent less damage and stagger damage from attacks. That, oh my god. That is legit. If they're additive, that is 60, wait. Up to 70% reduced damage and stagger damage taken on icebox that is nutty that oh my god if it actually works that way that is going to be the most busted thing i've ever seen in my life <laughs> if the character has 11 or more charge at the start of the scene gain two tenacity if the character has 20 or more charge at the start of the scene all other allies using a combat page gain a block die six to nine nice that comes first once per scene once per scene all allies respond to a one-sided attack with reliable shield while this character is active not played in clashes where both characters use a combat page charge blade can store up to 20 charges at once on a successful hit or upon winning a clash with defensive die inflict two paralysis if the character has charge once per target per scene uh static charge upon winning a clash with defensive dice gain three charge Whew, okay uh second wind it has experimental suit built into it oh my god i need it and this is the reliable shield card at the start of the next scene draw all copies of reliable shield from the deck four to eight reduce power of targets current offensive counter die by two rally potential energy discharge shield give one tenacity to all allies on three to five on clash lose gain one charge three to five on clash lose gain an additional charge <coughs> excuse me add plus four power and plus four additional damage if this attack is one-sided and on hit draw one page reprisal once again adaptive ages add copies of a block die on this page until the amount of dice is equal to the number of dice on the opponent's page on you spend all charge to give protection and stagger protection to all allies equal to one fourth of the amount of charge spent this scene and next scene with a minimum of one when not in a clash this changes to blunt and inflicts paralysis and feeble on hit inflict one enervation interesting and then another all out suppression oh, that was a lot to read ah yeah it attacks multiple people okay then what I'm gonna do quick suppression should be fine we also don't know who is manually targeted or wait a minute no, that tells us right there, doesn't it? I guess technically. I don't know. Um, and then end of the line should be able to easy, easy win against that. And then we can clash. Mm, we'll just hit there. And now it is time for my handiwork to show itself once again. Boom, boom. We are up to four on both technically five on stagger protection because of grit uh we are going to go for needlework just to try and win that clash uh ooh, and then we're gonna go for straining strings and crux sample that should be relatively good i'm going to go for a clash here and then solemn lament here i actually think we can finish off magnolias yeah i think we can finish them off no problem at all and then we're gonna go for puppetry here what are you going for uh, maneuvered assault should be fine we'll go for high kick 
and then multi slash and then let's see what Mao can potentially do let's go for prayer of the soul and prophecy of fear it should be fine straining strings it gets a shocking amount of hits in actually Oh yeah, that was a juicy amount of, uh, <laughs> that was a solid amount of damage. Okay, quick suppression does end up working in our favor, sink into misery, one, two, three, four. Need to work, nope, nope. Okay, we do hit the last one. End of the line, we do actually end up hitting. Bit surprising, because end of the line normally doesn't win clashes but when it does hit it is very powerful because of that execute potential that it has multi slash is going to do a tiny bit more stagger high kick just to try and get a stagger and it's also going to draw us a page take a bit of damage on icebox nothing that we can't undo as soon as mao is unstaggered next scene we are going to go for the mass attack we're above 11 charge so we're just going to try and win that uh, unfortunately, we are probably going to be staggered. I'm going to go for a curtain call and then just clash right there. And then I'm going to do another one. And then we're going to go for Prosanumi. Now we can... Oh, we can't target Mao yet. So we will hold off for the moment. We'll go for Enhancing Strings. Mending strings on ice box. Wing voracious for knowledge right here. And then we could go for multi slash right here, but we're probably going to take some damage regardless of what we do. When that clash, go for the curtain call right here. And that looks like that. Ugh. Counter die. Ooh, counter die working extremely. Extremely well in our favor. Sturdy defense. Sweet. And because we spent six light, I think we're going to restore an additional two. Combined with them both being... Well, they're not a four cost, so I guess they're not restoring the extra extra two. But it should be fine. Wing Voracious for Knowledge is going to win all those clashes. Repre repressed Flesh into a stagger. Very, very nice. Curtain Call is going to do just an insane amount of damage. Counter Die working in our favor. Not to mention, it counts for our win, our one clashes. And then let's deal even more damage. Uh, and then I'm debating Defreshutz, but... Could also go for Grinder. Yeah, we'll go for Grinder. And now the time has come. Gaze into the cosmos. Alright, delicious turn. Here we go. I don't know why I keep saying delicious in this episode, but that's fine. Insane amounts of damage from Ingvar. And now gaze into the cosmos. Almost everybody staggered. Nutty amounts of damage. Assuaging pulls is going to give us a couple of our strings back. Puppetry might just finish him off. Uh, five health left, but we're easily able to do it. Okay. Teeny tiny amount of damage taken on us. And now I think the only way to do... Actually, if we go for Grinder on Mao, do we actually do any damage? I don't know. Hey, may as well try. May as well uh, test it out, right? All right, this should be able to just finish it off. Ah, Mao is so cute. Okay, first one doesn't hit. No, even when using an ego page, Mao is only able to do stagger damage. Okay, well, that's a good thing to know, regardless. Eh. Clash of blades. Big damage. Sink into misery. We'll finish him off basically immediately. Disgusting amounts of damage. And now we can finish him off 
the right way. Wow, that did no damage. Well, you know what? We'll still finish him off the right way. Here we go. With a giant hammer. Any <laughs> Anything is possible with a giant hammer. Well, those were a fun couple of general receptions. Um, like I said, voice isn't quite back yet, but I wanted to record something, so I'm quite happy with the general receptions that we ended up doing. But with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, thank you for putting up with the fan in the background. I know I didn't mention it. I'm mentioning it at the end, just in case you didn't notice, but there's a decent chance that you did. But regardless, thank you for putting up with that. Thank you for putting up with a snight snightly, <sighs> slightly nasally sounding shadow. And with that, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.